Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Denmark once again and we're going to revisit a brewery who I was very impressed with the last time I tried one of their beers. It's only my second review from them actually, but we're going to return it to mid Öland today and we're having a taste of another beer from Abeltoft Gore Bruggery and this one is called the Skunk Jam. So it comes in at 7% ABV and it's a New England style IPA. This time they're using Columbus and Victoria Secret. Columbus of course is a really nice spicy floral aromatic American hop and Victoria Secret of course comes from Australia and it gives you some quite nice kind of tropical fruits and things like this as well and the last beer I tried from these guys I believe was the Raw Power which was a New England IPA I can't remember if it was a double or a single but it was a really damn good beer anyway straight single hop citra beer so definitely looking forward to this one I was very impressed with them before so I'm really interested to see how these beers come across with uh, with slightly different hops it should be a very very interesting review and this seems to be a, a brewery that many Danes regard as very up and coming. So if you get the chance to try some of their beers, I highly recommend that you do. And hopefully I can do some more in the near future. This, of course, was another beer that was recommended to me by Karsten over at Kiosk in Copenhagen. So definitely make sure you check that shop out if you find yourself in the area. But anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, of course, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Abeltov Gore Bregory before. This is only the second time I'm reviewing one of their beers, but there will be more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you, and that's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Abeltoft Gore Bregory then. So as I've mentioned to you before, Abeltoft Gore Bregory are based on a farm, as the name would suggest, in Abeltoft on the Jerusalem Peninsula near Randers and Aarhus on mid Öland, which is the mainland part of Denmark. So the owner of the brewery is Peter Zacko Hansen, who was originally a mechanical engineer, but he later decided to become a brewer and he's actually self-taught in the art of brewing. But as the name suggests, it's part of an old farm complex and this has been converted and you can find the brewery just on the edge of the Moles Bierge National Park. So in addition to beer, the brewery also produces cider, they do bottled water as well and Peter's brother Christian actually works with the company importing coffee from various places around the world as well. But the brewery's got a small cafe on site where you can drink the beers and enjoy views of the Kattegat, which is the sea area between Denmark and the southwestern coast of Sweden. Of course, it is where uh, Vikings is set, actually, with Ragnar Lothbrok and all of this, too. But it's meant to be very, very nice. Hopefully, I can get round there and have a little look at that at some point, because I have seen it from the Swedish side, but I've only ever really been to Copenhagen and Helsingør in Denmark. So I do need to get over there and explore a little bit more at some point soon. But hopefully next year, when I go back to Sweden and have a job there. So definitely something to look forward to. But like I said, if you get the chance to try one of the Abeltoft beers, it seems to be one that the Danes are rating very, very highly these days. So pick them up when you get the chance. As I say, you can find them in Shiosk in, uh, in Copenhagen and probably various other places across Denmark as well. So yeah, that's all you need to know about the brewery just now. Like I said, all the links are in the description below. I'll put the link to Shiosk down in the description below as well and you can have a look at that. But let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself. So like I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is a 7% New England style IPA. From what I could gather on one of the Danish blogs that I read, this beer uses Columbus and Victoria's Secret. Uh, Columbus, of course, gives you a quite distinctive, almost curry-like kind of spicy floral aromaticity, whereas Victoria's Secret gives you things like pineapples and, uh, and stuff like this. It's quite a tropical, uh, fruity tropical hop, actually, from Australia. But yeah, I'll just like to have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open up. Quite similar, actually, in style a little bit to the raw power that I had before. This one, of course, is a half liter bottle, 50 centiliters, and there is the Abeltoft Gore Bregory bottle cap on this one. I do have one of those already, but I probably will keep this one. You can like this brewery on Facebook, Twitter, and all of that, of course, too. But without further ado then, let's get this beer out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Really looking forward to this. Yeah, nice smoky opening then, and we'll get it out and into the glass. So yeah, as you can see, a nice, quite hazy IP. You can smell some of those nice fruity characters coming off. There's a little bit of a kind of peachy, probably apricot-y thing is a better way to describe it actually, coming out of this one as I've opened it up. 
but it does smell really quite nice and it has poured pretty much exactly what you would expect this one's quite a nice rich almost blood orange color you can really smell some of those those lovely fruits coming off this but there's a nice kind of two finger frothy head on this one. I would say it's got a little bit of a creamy colour to it rather than being brilliant white. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head as well. But you know, it looks pretty much exactly as you would expect from these New England IPAs. There are one or two little bits of uh, sediment floating around but you know, as we always say with beer, it is all natural. It's just a little bit of the yeast, so it is safe to drink it. But yeah, let's have a little look at the aroma then, and we'll see how we get on. Looks exactly as you'd expect from a New England style IPA. Yeah, that smells pretty nice actually. So yeah, you can pick up a, a kind of a bit of that distinct, almost peppery floral aromaticity. That's the Columbus coming straight out of this one. There is a bit of a distinct kind of lemony note to it as well, like a little bit of a lemon grassy, citrusy kind of thing. I always find the the Columbus gives you a little bit of that actually. Centennial, of course, is the other one that's quite popular in that regard too. But Columbus has this really distinctive, uh, just almost peppery, almost curry powder type, um, spiced floral aromaticity to it. So yeah, but with this one, it really is more fruity than anything. The Victoria's Secret is the one that's giving you a lot of these nice juicy fruits. So I would say there's there's definitely some, I would say there's a bit of pineapple in there, sort of peaches and apricots. It's really peaches and apricots that are coming to the fore for this one, um, the fore for me with this beer. There's a wee bit of a kind of grapefruit note as well, you can pick up a little bit of that and that will I think be from the Columbus. It can give you just a little bit of grapefruit as well as that kind of spicy and, and slightly lemony note. But yeah, it's got a lot of night. It does really smell quite juicy, this. Peaches and apricots, I think, are the perfect way to kind of describe this one. The apricots are really coming out of this one for me. It reminds me, actually, some of these yogurts that my mum used to give me when I was really young. And that's what makes me... I know apricot, the aroma of apricot, very well. And that was immediately what kind of jumped out to me with this one. Although there is a little bit of that sharper peachy note, like I was saying. But some nice, almost peppery floral aromaticity of the beer. You can pick up, there's a little bit of that slightly dank kind of pine resin character coming out of this one. And the malt base, you can actually smell a little bit of that as well. I think there's a wee bit of a biscuity caramel note to it, but you can pick up some of these sort of white bready characters. It does have an almost, you can pick up a little bit of the oaty character as well. But this one, the malt base isn't too apparent in this. To me, it actually leans a little bit more to the kind of uh, caramelly, biscuity side of things than the oats. And if it is a New England IPA, I'm pretty sure it said on the, the Danish blog that I read that this one was meant to be a New England IPA. It doesn't quite have the same kind of oaty notes that you can sometimes pick up. I think the hops are really kind of pushing the malt base back on this one a little bit. This Some of the, these New England IPAs can be a little bit more juicy than anything else. But this one... And this one for me is kind of like that. You can't get as much of the malt on this one. This one you can really smell these big tropical fruity notes just pushing their way out. And you can tell, I think this one is going to be a pretty bitter one, judging by the aroma. But as I always say, take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you actually get stuck into it. That's half the experience when it comes to craft beer, to whiskey and sake and things like this. So definitely give that a little bit of a chance. Uh, just do that before you actually taste the beer. But this one smells really nice. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. So this one is the Skunk Jam from Abeltoff Gore Bregory in the Katag on the coast of the Katagat area in Denmark on mid Thailand. Skull. Yeah. That's a pretty damn good beer, I have to say that. I wasn't really expecting anything else from these guys because, you know, Bal as I said, Balder and uh, and Karsten and Kiosk, they recommended this one to me. It was Karsten actually, because uh, Balder's gone now, but Karsten recommended this one to me and said this is a really kind of uh, up and coming brewery when I had the first one. And, you know, he's not wrong. They're still producing really good beers, even though they've had the, the change of brewmaster. But yeah, that's really quite nice. 
and I remember this with the raw power that I had before as well, they've got this distinctive base to them the ones that these guys are doing and it has just a little, a slightly little bit more caramelly and biscuity sweetness and I do like that this one is only 7% but I've said it in a couple of the videos, I think 8% is as high as you can go with the New England IPAs without adding a little bit of caramel or biscuit malt or something like that to cover the alcohol but these guys are, are adding a little bit of caramel and biscuit malt I think earlier on and it just gives the beer, it gives the malt base a little bit more complexity and it gives the beer another layer and it works really really well in my opinion. But this is really nice. For me, this is probably one of my favourite New England IPAs I've had. As I always say, beer is subjective and people in, people taste different things but I really just like how the, the malt base in this has a little bit more complexity. I, I love the New England IPAs but if you have a little bit more complexity to it then I think it just adds something more. It's like I've said with the with the black IPAs, I always think you have to take a black IPA up to the imperial strength and add a little bit of caramel and things like that just to give it that little extra layer of, of uh, complexity. But And for me, I think if you do that with the New England IPAs, you will get just a little bit more out of them. But this is a really nice beer. So yeah, as I always say, just sugar the beer around your palate a little bit and let your whole mouth adjust before you start analysing the flavour too much. But this is really nice. I think this beer was rated 98 or so on Rate Beer when I checked out earlier. Don't take Rate Beer as the gospel of your beers though. It is always a good, a fairly good barometer, but there are various things you have to consider when uh, when it comes to that. It will tell you if the beer is a pretty good one, and trust me, with Abletoff Gore Brewery, you are going to get a good quality beer. But with this one, then, you can feel a little bit of that nice kind of white bready character just going right across the middle of the tongue. It's definitely got a little bit of that wheaty smoothness to it as well. You can pick up the slightly creamier flavours from the oats too, but right in the middle of your palate, I'm getting a little bit of, of a, a caramel note, it's almost a little bit of a slightly toasted caramel as well. You can feel that there's, a, as the flavour progresses, you can feel there's a little bit of a, a grainy character starts to push its way out as well. And that works really, really nicely for this beer as well. So as you come further forward on the tongue, that caramelly note just becomes a little bit more biscuity. And you can just feel that pushing up the very middle of your tongue towards the front. And as you would expect, the hops are all coming out on the edge of your palate. But it's it's really nice. This beer just kind of blends together very, very well. It's not too punchy in any one regard, I think. There is a good bit of bitterness there. I think probably around maybe 60 or 70 IBUs with this. I'm guessing, because I'm not sure what the IBUs are on this. And I don't think, pretty sure it didn't say on the bottle as well. But I have to say, this one is a pretty nice beer. So if you get the chance to try it, I recommend that you do. But yeah, with this one, there's a wee touch of earthiness in the back corner of the palate, and that can be a product of both of the hops in this, although it might just be it's not uh, at its freshest, of course, that can be one of the things, although it is definitely in date. I think it's a, it's been in the bottle about a month or so, this one. So you want to usually get it within the two, the two weeks if you can. So just bear that in mind when I'm reviewing this. But there's a wee touch of earthiness there. That will start to come out as the beer ages a little bit. But as you come further forward along the sides of your palate, there's a wee bit of herbal character in there. But then there's a lot of this kind of nice, spicy, floral aromaticity. That'll be mainly the Columbus that's giving you that. You can feel that nice, almost peppery, spicy, floral aromaticity, particularly on the front corners of your palate. Then as you go round the very front curve of your tongue, there's a nice little bit of a kind of juicy lemon grassy note coming out of the beer. Those lighter grassy notes are always really nice to pick up. But that's a really nice beer. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. I'll say that straight away with it. This is really good. And if you get to try this one or the raw power, I think there's another IP or a paleo that they do as well that's supposed to be very good. But if you get to try any of the beers within that category from Abletoft, just buy them and have a go because they are very good quality. But as I always tell you with these beers, just behind the front curve of your palate, that's where you'll get this little oily bubble. And that's where some of these nice, kind of juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. So with this one, as you progress further into the aftertaste, you can feel there's a little touch of grapefruit just coming out of this one. But you can just feel that underpinning the beer. But initially, it's more of a, tro of, of a kind of juicy or tropical fruit that you're getting out of the beer.
I want to say there's a wee touch of passion fruit in there. But yeah, and as as the flavour goes on, you start to get a little bit of that peachy apricot character that I'm talking about. Maybe some kind of papaya. I want to say mangoes as well, but usually mangoes are what you'd expect from citra. But to me, it comes up uh, as quite a similar flavour. But it's really, it's papayas. That that peachy apricot character is coming out of this one for me as well. But it's, it's it goes together really nicely with that kind of peppery floral character, that peppery floral spicy note that's on the side of your tongue. This whole beer just blends together really quite well. Like I said, Abeltoft are going to give you a good quality beer. But that's really nice. I think, yeah, peaches, apricots, a little bit of papaya, I think, as well. It does have almost that, it does have that quite distinctive papaya flavour. I, I basically taught myself with the fruits and just tasted the fruits and the different juices and things. And papaya really, for me, is what's coming out of this one. There is there is an element of mango in there as well, but really it's peaches, apricots and papaya that are the main fruit with me. A little bit of passion fruit at the start as well and a bit of grapefruit just underpinning it. I think that's a good way to kind of sum up the fruitiness of this beer. But that slightly darker fruity character that you get kind of underpinning it, that goes together well with it, with the spicier and more kind of dank notes that you have on the side of your palate too. But overall, it's a really nice beer and it's certainly one of the, one of the good one of the really good New England IPAs that you're going to find in Denmark as well, so try it if you get the chance. In terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say this one is mid-bodied. The carbonation is, is fairly smooth on this, it does have a little bit of a prickle. The overall mouthfeel, it does have a little bit of the smoothness that you'd expect from the New England IPA, but it does feel a little bit more wetter and oily to me than some of the other ones that I've had. Again, that seems, for me, that's a little bit of a trait of the Abletoff Gore Brew. Like I said, that slightly more complex malt base that you get out of it is the, one of the traits of these beers. And I always find that because of that, they are just a little bit more oily. There's a good bit of hoppy bitterness to this one. The malt base, like I said, has a mixture of that smoothness that you expect, but it's also got a little bit of sweetness and there's some nice juicy fruits as well, particularly the darker aspects of the hops the more kind of spicy floral things and the grapefruit, they go together really quite nicely in this one. So it is something a little bit different, this, the Victoria Secret Hop, if you are a fan of, of like uh, peaches and apricots and mangoes and things like that, that, that's a hop that you definitely want to check out. And after trying the Raw Power, uh, which is a straight up American hop one, the Citra of course, this one is certainly a, a nice kind of variant to try. But for me, this is a really good beer, it offers a little bit more complexity than you're going to get from some of the other New England IPAs that you'll come across these days. So once again, a big thumbs up to Abletoff Gore Brewery on this one. So if you get the chance to try the, scum, the Skunk Jam, definitely check out. I hopefully can try this beer on tap one time. I think that would be a really quite nice so yeah i think that's a good way to kind of sum up this review then so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from abletoft gore breakery as well hopefully i can return to them in the near future but do check out all my social media those links are in the description below as well and subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more beer reviews but most importantly support your local craft breweries and do check out some of these Danish craft beers. De Denmark is a really great country these days for craft beer and go and visit it if you get the chance. Some really nice people over there. So until the next time, slander just now and I will catch you guys very soon. The Skunk Jam New England IPA with Columbus and Victoria Secret from Abletoft Gore Breakery on Mid-Oiland in Denmark. Skull.